Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Assalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim So Jazakallah khair uh, Inshallah for all those viewers who are just tuning in We have uh, an excellent lineup of speakers And Inshallah in this session we'll have uh, um, Three of those uh, great speakers uh, You know touching upon the subjects uh, Pertaining to the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and his seerah Next speaker we have uh, Dr. Jamal Badawi uh, Dr. Jamal Badawi is a North American Dawah pioneer. He's a former professor uh, and an author of several books. Um, his research interests include apostasy, gender equality in Islam, uh, Muslim non Muslim relationships, and Muslim contributions to the civilization. He is also a part of the Fit Islamic Fit Council in North America and Europe and the International Union of Muslim Scholars. Dr. Jamal Badawi, inshallah, will be talking about defending the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With dignity so uh before um please uh, please go ahead uh, dr jamal alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam al nabiyyin wa al-musaleen sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it is really an honor and pleasure for me to be able to connect with you after almost four years of uh, not uh, traveling uh, across the border from Canada uh, by choice. And uh, Alhamdulillah, maybe through the, uh, through this means, we have the resemblance, inshallah, of meeting one another. I'll go straight to the topic after thanking, of course, the organizers and the chair and the sister who preceded me and all the speakers actually who preceded me. Uh, the topic as assigned, as you know, is defending the honor of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dignity. Inshallah, my plan is to deal with three areas, some of which may take a little more time than the other, but mainly I have three questions to raise or deal with. First, is the issue that has been in the media recently and still continue to be a defense of freedom of expression versus those Muslims who don't believe in that? And is it really, if we accept freedom of expression, is it absolutely unqualified? In an answer to that question, I must say, and I base that part on a humble paper that I wrote many years ago about uh, freedom of expression. But I just chose a small part of it. it with some modification, minor modification. In many nations, uh, including the so-called liberal democracies, uh, there are legal parameters of freedom of expression. No freedom of any type is utterly absolute. It doesn't make any sense. The, it does not mean, however, that freedom of expression means freedom of slander, defamation, production and distribution of harmful and indecent materials, especially those depicting violence against women uh, or incites hatred and hence uh, violence against other groups of people based on their religion, beliefs, culture, race, you name it. And that's why some of the legislation in many countries actually, or most really, uh, there are statements in the law uh, to give some parameters to that or guidelines. But suppose even the guidelines doesn't cover all uh, aspects or situations. Well, we know also that any professional organization have some kind of self-regulating professional uh, contacts or standards 
um, physicians have their own bodies, engineers have their own bodies, and even journalists have a sort of accepted, if not explicit, uh, professional standards of decency. Just for example, if a journalist was taping a crime and there was a very, very gruesome uh, picture, I think nobody will tell them legally, don't show that. But I think they realize that this is not suitable for general viewing. It could be very uh, traumatic for children to watch it. So nobody will tell them you have to do it, but this becomes part of the professional standards. But even if we, a situation doesn't fall in either categories, the law and professional standard, there's also in many in any society, but more particularly those who pride themselves on civility and decency. There are things that you don't do it for the sake of uh, just uh, hurting other people. Uh, that kind of uh, of behavior. Yeah, I mean, if you're not, you're not talking about an academic critique, even of religion or anything, but just to hurt the feeling of people, especially in, a, in the worst of time and, and circumstances. So these are various layers of, uh, of sort of guidelines or parameters of the use of uh, freedom of expression. However, I must make it clear that Muslims are not like many people say, and some even behave this way, and don't get violent simply because somebody uh, make a, an academic uh, critique of, of Islam. They just sometimes lose their mind uh, with this. In fact, objective, academic, accurate, and fair criticism, even of religion or belief, is acceptable. In fact, uh, we know that the Quran itself even mentions, doesn't hide, mention objections to Islam when they accuse the Prophet وسلم, of making up the Quran and this and that's pretty, if, even though it wasn't really that academic or objective for that matter. Uh, but fairness also, the sense of fairness and honor uh, requires a number of things. Uh, first of all, that we should never mix up between the normative teaching of any faith, for that matter, I'm speaking in a more even universal tone, uh, the normative teaching properly understood, because there is sometimes an attitude of somebody is pushed or loves to do something or might commit violation, even murder, and he just try to refer to anything in the Quran that he or she doesn't understand it, what it means, doesn't understand the proper methodology of interpretation, doesn't understand not only the textual context, but even the historical context and make sweeping generalizations. And this is done uh, by many people from various religions, by the way, to justify everything. And we know how uh, religious figures in the past, for example, uh, refer to the Bible to justify the brutal uh, uh, crusades for, for centuries even and bloodshed, uh, that some people also took excuse from religion or certain biblical references to justify the deprivation of Palestinians from their rights and mistreating them and take away their land, uh, their farms, their property, to prevent them from returning to their homes and all of this. I'm not saying all Jews like that, but there are some people, and we've read that, let's not hide it. It's so clear that some of them, even big relig uh, religious figures, uh, gave the what you might call fatwa or verdict that uh, it's okay to uh, completely eliminate the Palestinian existence uh, in occupied Palestine. And the same thing happened also with, uh, unfortunately, some Muslim also 
who have the same problem with interpretation or some problem with negative attitudes or violent attitudes to commit all kinds of things and they try to seek some kind of justification in the Quran and Sunnah. I think this is a very crucial distinction so that we don't generalize on people. If, uh, if, uh, if somebody is violent, is violating the Quran, no matter what he or she claims, uh, then we don't say, oh, these are the Muslims. All Muslims should pay for that. Imagine one and a half to two billion Muslims all over the world must pay for any violent action committed by a single Muslim. That happens in all places. But the, the double standards is when somebody commit an act of terror, they say, uh, they seldom, by the way, call it act of terror. Recently, they started using that. Uh, they call uh, an, an, an act of violence, an act of murder, an act of this, this and that. But when the person is a Muslim, it is Muslim terrorism, and worst even, this is Islamic terrorism, which is even preached by their own uh, scripture. This is the kind of injustices that many people would fall. And again, I'm speaking across the board. I'm not biased towards this or that. If a Muslim commit that, he's wrong. If a Jew committed that, he's wrong. If a Christian committed, and I'm sure many of my uh, uh, Christian friends from uh, Jewish and Christian religions have been involved for too long in uh, dialogues. Many of them who are sensible and fair, they fully agree in this. So we don't mix between uh, teaching, uh, normative, uh, properly interpreted and understood, and the actions of some individuals, in some cases even total deviation in the name of the faith, falsely. So we have no problem with the uh, fair uh, discourse on those uh, issues. Um, we must say, in that respect also, there is a difference between critique and uh, obscenity, really. It's not freedom of obscenity. Decent people in civilized society do not entertain themselves or their readers or audience or viewers through mocking at uh, fellow citizens of other religions and cultures, uh, in some cases even outright insults to the most sacred symbols of this, of any religion for that matter, with, with no valid cause really except uh, you know, no redeeming value in that critique except to hurt others and also to tear down the fabric uh, of society and endanger the coexistence and social uh, peace in a, any society for that matter. But then uh, I'd just like to mention a couple of things about the difficulty sometimes or, uh, or things that are uh, overlooked when we talk, talk about uh, applications of freedom of expression. One, when double standards uh, are applied, when some people do not dare launch a remotely even derogatory or incite for an, 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 an insulting, hateful attack against a particular segment in society because of their, uh, especially they're more powerful when the attackers are more powerful um, in terms of political power and otherwise. Uh, they never dare do that. I'll give you a frank example. You see, as Muslims, we are not anti-Semitic because a good large number of, number of Muslims are the descendants of Sam, so they are Semitic also. They could not be against themselves at this portion of Muslims. Nor is it correct to say Muslims are anti 
Jewishness or Judaism. When the Quran mentioned the name of Moses many times in the Quran with reverence and he is regarded as a prophet of Islam also in the generic meaning. So it is recognized as a faith whether there is difference or not. We respect the right to practice their faith without infringing on the rights of others. The same thing apply when we talk about Christianity and Christian history. Uh, so with this in mind, um, we know, like I said, for example, in, uh, in France, in uh, UK, Germany, and maybe other countries in the Western world, anybody even who raised a question about the number of the people who died in the, or were killed uh, in the brutal Holocaust, even that could be a reason for imprisonment. You can read about that. Now, which this is regarded, there is no freedom of expression here. And it, many, it, many spinning are taking, take place to see how serious. So there's no freedom of expression, even in that sense. But when the owner of the greatest prophet of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the seal of the prophets is done, then everything goes. No people of wisdom and fairness or very few stand in the face of that. So there is a kind of double standards in that matter. It is even more hurtful uh, when, let me, let me say it frankly, I mean good wallahi by that. When the excuse of freedom of expression is only a thin veil that some people hide behind to express their racism, their racism, their vanity and claim of superiority. And we see that all over in so many uh, countries. Uh, in that case, even any criticism of their misbehavior or abuse of freedom of expression is equated with being uh, incivility, uh, lack of accepting or embracing modernity and all the other fancy terms they use, where in fact it could be racism, simple and pure. Okay, so racism or some other uh, claims of superiority. Uh, likewise, a human rights organization with the recognition, of course, that they've done a very good job generally to bring to the world, the international community, as it's called, the uh, trespassing on the human rights of many people, but more especially uh, who are uh, living under oppressive and dictatorial type of uh, regimes. But there are some, with all the appreciation of their good work, sometimes less attention is paid or not equal attention is paid to many, many of the major areas of this violation of human rights all over the world, whether it's about Muslims in China, the Kashmiri people and the right of independence or at least self-determination, the Palestinian people, uh, so the, the, uh, the Rohingya Muslims, uh, but not enough or proportionate kind of attention has been given to all of those uh, periods. I'm not saying they do that deliberately, but I understand also sometimes they might have difficulty reaching people and they have restrictions. And many journalists, as you know, a lot are arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and in some cases killed every year. Many journalists are killed because of revealing that truth. Okay, a second point of three. Uh, when deliberate attack on a given group uh, of faith repeatedly launched in the worst time and circumstances, uh, those who hold more power in society 
may afford to engage in some measure of insults and sacred of the sacred. And that raises a question again, like I said, the role of discrimination and racism in, in the total, total picture. A third point, before I come to the second question briefer, briefly, uh, that uh, when the subject of unjustified insults represents the source of identity of other people, religious identity or otherwise, who they are, their pride in their own human dignity and who they think they would like to be, uh, or their religious sacred symbol, it is regarded as, and many people don't understand that, and especially in the case of Islam, this is an attack on the identity of the person himself. So it's not a, some kind of prophet or whatever other people attack prophet. For a Muslim, that's that's totally different. It's it's the identity that constitutes who the Muslim is. Uh, it may be uh, helpful to note something that many of you perhaps are aware of, that the uh, European Court of Human Rights in, in 2018 upheld an Austrian court ruling that non-objective debate and discussion about Prophet Muhammad وسلم, I added وسلم, can be a form of uh, the uh, disparagement that uh, does not fall within the frame of freedom of expression. It's not an opinion of Muslims, but even in, uh, in Europe. Actually, the Austrian court described disparaging remarks about the Prophet ﷺ, it means, um, as uh, something that is really outside of, uh, of the realm of freedom of expression, and actually it provokes, they say, prejudice against Muslims and risk religious peace, which is an objective also. Freedom of expression is one aspect, keeping peace in society and preventing violence by one or the other uh, is also an important cause. Uh, you can check, of course, there is a, a link that gives you the full uh, ruling of, uh, of that decision. A second question, and I'll be very brief on that because of time, are the attacks on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and other, not only prophets in history, other honorable reformers, because the Quran give credit also, like people who are not even thought to be prophets, like Luqman, that some say was a prophet, some say wise man, okay, or anyone of uh, the reformer who called for decency and, and justice. Now, are these attacks really uh, new? Is it just recent incident? Is it only Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? The answer is no, and I give just two quick examples. I, initially, I had lots of details, but I'll just give two examples. One, we find clear evidence in more than one ayah in the Quran that all prophets, not only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, has been mocked by non-believers. I'll give you a reference to that, Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah, in Ayah 10, وَلَقَدْ اسْتُهْزِئَ بِرُسُلٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Other messengers, meaning the new Muhammad Sallallahu so it means it includes him. Other messengers had already been ridiculed before you, O Prophet, but those who mocked them were overtaken by what they use to ridicule. So that's a title that's wide. Specific details about Prophet Muhammad وسلم, or others is there. A second example of attacks on the prophets is to try uh, to disqualify them uh, and question even whether they are prophets or not. Just one example again. Uh, in Surah uh, uh, Dariyat, the Surah number is uh, uh, 
51 in ayah 52 it says كذلك ما أتى الذين من قبلهم من رسول إلا قالوا ساحر أو مجنون similarly meaning to what the Prophet ﷺ faced and encounters no messenger came before sorry no messenger came to those before them without being told oh a magician or a madman that again is a broader coverage of several ayat and hadith that shows that it is the good people sometimes that are criticized harshly wrongly and sometimes people even may not be like them but because of other personal or tribal motives or jealousy or whatever they always refuse so it's not only conviction there may be some which they are entitled if they're not convinced fine there's no compulsion but uh, to raise all kind of doubts and the third part is only just a brief uh, review of what can we do you mean we stand just and watch there and they say peace will be with you and all of that now except for the case where violence is committed against muslim i'm not talking about violence saying bad word or whatever violence that requires legitimate self-defense within a particular uh, legal just authorities not individuals taking the law in their hands and saying no i interpret this word or that word as a as a capital crime uh, when you look at the quran in general you find there are three things that we are told or told to do or not to do for that matter when somebody uh, you know infringes uh, and make unjustified negative remarks about the greatest prophet of Allah and the greatest, the greatest human being who walked on this earth. We feel the same for all prophets, but more especially for the Muslim, speaking from that perspective. A Muslim cannot counter the attack of others by cursing their prophets. Religiously speaking, you can, if somebody attack Muslims, you don't say some, a Muslim can retaliate by attacking Jesus or Moses, this is totally out as the Quran teaches respect and adoration and belief in all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's restricted, he can't do that. It's, 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 it's not even an option for the Muslim. But even in the case of people who are not Muslims or not Ahl al-Kitab, people of the book, even those who worship idols, we find a reference to that also in the Quran. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرَ عَنْ Don't revile or curse, uh, meaning the gods, whatever, الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ Those who have the like, gods besides Allah or instead of Allah. Because if you do, they may retaliate by saying the same thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that a Muslim should not use as... Uh, uh, response the, dr badawi inshallah if we can uh, um, you know briefly wrap up and exactly okay in one minute yes, one yes. okay right but we find also in the quran depending on the situation in many cases the quran was in the madi madani makki quran was ala ma yaqulun wahjurhum hajran jamli the prophet sallallahu is told and Surah Muzammil, be patient with what they say and have an honorable avoidance of them. Uh, the Quran also, وَإِذَا خَطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامُ One of the description of Ibad rahman the real servant of Allah, when the foolish address them, meaning revile them, they say, peace. Uh, and finally, in a practical sense, there are positive things that we do, but peacefully. One is to mobilize people as individuals, the populace, governments, especially when 
uh, when the governments are not doing their job or doing the opposite, there are the, the people themselves should mobilize. The scholars should mobilize, and unfortunately, those who say the word of truth are either underground shuhada and Allah, maybe martyrs with Allah, or being tortured in the prisons of tyrants and so on. But we do, not every government is like that, and there are degrees, so we appeal to governments, to all organizations like human rights organization. And I would add quite sincerely also, with many decent non-Muslims, whether they are Christ Christian Jews and others, uh, if the cause is commonly accepted by uh, this group, so that we stand together as Muslims and friends of Muslims also in the face of this destructive attitude under the disguise of freedom of expression. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Madawi. Um, this was a very, you know, uh, in the context of the times of today that we're living in, very, very relevant uh, discussions. Allah. We, Allah make us from those that uh, the Prophet intervenes for. Jazakallah uh, khair, everyone, all the speakers. Uh,